Hello everyone, let's get started. Um, I hope I can manage today all I want to manage. I have no financial advice, I have no financial interests, I have no sponsored links. <coughs> And I don't want no donation, please. Um, I put out this screenshot, you can see now. Let me show my face also. Um, from RippleNet Home. I hope you can see it and I hope you can hear it. I put my microphone a little bit closer. Um, I wrote in the... In the in the tweet, imagine saving 500 million by using RippleNet every week. Because it says here, last seven days. And then I got a, f a reply from someone, let me see if you can see that. Um, I think it was CD. Ah, no, this guy here. This uh, Joe SMO, he basically wrote, isn't this representative of total network figures over the last seven days? How do you know this is stats for one bank? And the live stream today, and I really need your help. I want you to correct me. I put that chat to the side. I want you to correct me on the stuff I'm trying to explain how I think it's actually really from one bank those figures okay so let's move that to the side okay um, now basically the table you can see here I started with the global daily volume from Swift, from Swift which is reportedly 5 trillion that basically means that in a week we would have depending on how you count i did i usually tend to be conservative so on the on the swift figures i go high i calculate by seven days even though i think swift doesn't work uh, every day that would give us 35 trillion per week at 10% global volume, which is what I think Ripple could very well achieve, that'll be 3.5 trillion in this weekly volume. At 30%, it'll be 10.5 trillion. That figure, let me try to move that in again here. If it's really for the last seven days, how can you see that? The last seven days, then it's 124 billion. I move that away again. But we do not know here if it's a total or just one financial institution. My hunch was that it's um, what just one financial institution. Then I did a rough average over the 300 plus customers and don't get me wrong I know that many of those customers are are remittance companies which do not have that high volume but you also know that I 
I'm a very strong believer in the super highway theory that those companies like Finastra, Temino, CGI and Task Group also got quite some customers on RippleNet, which as Navin Gupta told me as well, aren't really Ripple customers. They're using RippleNet but not Ripple customers. So I think 300 is a good figure even though I think those those uh, those uh, banking software the four I mentioned could have brought even more but we will see in a minute why I think this 300 like real banks cosmos is really a good average then I calculated at 500 million weekly which gives us 150 billion I calculated at the moderate 8 billion weekly which gives us 2.4 trillion where we are a little bit below this this 10% uh, of SWIFT and then I calculated with 44 billion and I will let you know in a minute from where I get this 44 billion from actually here I made already a mistake because this is weekly and the 44 I took from daily let me make a note um, pages um, correct the weekly daily figures Swift 44 average is daily and on the table it's weekly now let me think if the Swift average is daily and here I take take it as weekly then we are actually quite conservative as well right can you confirm that guys so let's come back to that then I also calculated the global yearly cost that's reportedly in the Internet of Vision ripple PDF 1.7 or 1.6 trillion I think that's correct that would be millions billions trillions that would be a weekly cost of 30 billion then this figure here would be at 30% market share and 30% cost saving so when we check the formula it's twice times 30% market share and 30% cost savings because X current saves roughly 30% cost okay now in let me pull back that tweet again here we had 500 million or 0 0.5 billion cost savings per week okay that's basically that figure here and now where I basically want to have your feedback in the end if you think it anyway adds up and now let me explain how I kind of derived at those figures I will remove myself so that you can see the full screen I hope you can see um, well those figures now can you give me a quick feedback if you can read the numbers I really hope you can read the numbers can you thumbs up or down I hope is it still am I still live um, where am I I have so many windows open right now um, live streaming excellent
Can you see the numbers? Somehow it's not scrolling here. Top chat. Ah, I need maybe live chat. Yes, yes, yes. That's stupid. I have this twice open. Ah, okay. That was maybe from yesterday. Okay, alles gut. All, man kann alles sehen. Okay. So now let's go into those figures. So I took the top 100 banks from Wikipedia by assets under management. That's AUM, assets under management. Which gives us basically for the top 100 banks that's in billions. Like, I don't even know that figure. That's roughly 100 trillion assets under management by the top 100 banks, okay? That gives us roughly this distribution. The green one here are the actual figures which are reported as uh, assets under management. And then I kind of tried to at least I get close to that curve, which is a log logarithmic curve, the yellow one, which never goes really to zero. Okay. You can also correct me on that if you think it's wrong. However, I think the approximation is quite well. I then added two columns, amount of transaction and transaction volume in billions. And I modified this formula here, you can see this one, this is the one for assets under management. I modified it a little bit to be a little bit lower to give us a similar curve. It's not 100% identical in the, in the slope, but it's the best I could manage. If someone manages to tell me the formula, so that I can get the pro a proper total value for amount of transactions and transaction volume over those 100, which is more like almost synchronous or parallel to the assets under management, I'd be happy. However, we know that Swift has, has a daily 15 million messages going like payment messages all in all it's 30 something million but like half of them are other messages which are not regarding payments and we also know that swift is transact transacting this figure we have seen already in the first table here on top the five trillion here here it's billions transaction volume in billions and th the last ones the last row here is the total Okay, now why, why do we not reach the 5 trillion and the 15 million transaction? Because this curve is logarithmic and it goes down. Okay, so we need to give us some space. But I think it's fair enough to think that the remainder, even though it's quite many, but the values drop really low. I even made a, a calculation at position 200 and feet, like the last bank of this bank of top 100 has still 240 billion assets under management. At position 250, it's only 4.5 billion. At position 500, it's only 9 million anymore. So the value is, um, I need to scroll a little bit to the left so that you can see that. So the value is really deteriorating quite drastically. When we speak about that, we know Swift has 11,000 clients, customers connected to the network. But I think Ripple is not really after those ones which only have 9 million assets under management. Eventually for the Internet of Value, mass adoption, surely, no doubt about that. Um, 
but I don't think they will need to have a, a direct uh, RippleNet connection. So from here, from those figures, from, from this um, lo logarithmic formula, we could assume that from the 11,000 financial institutions connected to SWIFT, for RippleNet, less than 500 are really important because after that the, the values they manage and the transactions they do get so low, okay? Now, when we take a look at this formula and we take the average and you can see down here the average of those top 100 banks in transaction volume and that's the daily figure would be 44 billion okay that's the figure I've been using here but actually I've been using here as weekly so it's rather conservative as well I hope I really not doing a mistake here Please correct me, people. Um, that would be... I have to think that through again. But I cannot do that on the live stream now. Um, if that's weekly... I think anyway it, it it makes quite some sense that these figures here let me bring it back these figures here are from one institution only and let's now look at those figures I know that as well this uh, DBS group had uh, the CEO of that bank had a uh, uh, present a session a presentation it was actually not so much about ripple net at all it was more about how his bank went in the process i think three or four years from more or less manual and not really analog but like old technology to totally like almost totally digital they have still a few mainframe computers which they plan to move to the cloud in the next I think two years or so and then there will be like 100% uh, digital totally and they have like a, a daily transaction volume of 100 and, or of 21 billion times 7 that basically would be roughly in the amount in the area of this 124 billion and I think also Banco Pradesco is a, is a customer that would us put in in the area of around those guys here so in the last third of that top hundred list and I think it makes quite a lot of sense and also you remember that um, the the how do you call that ah that I made a, a proof once that from the top hundred banks third more than thirty percent are ripple net customers now the only thing i I was a bit not so hundred percent sure is this 0 0.5 billion savings in a week because that figure if we would assume it'll be one of the banks in that area here to match the basically the kind of the volume they have on on a weekly basis then we would need to assume that the, the, the larger the banks, the higher those cost savings were. And if we then would calculate that 
up from that one bank to more banks it would be way more than the 2.7 trillion but and here maybe your thoughts could be that we actually do have way more way more customers already I really don't know so basically that's what I wanted to explain now I'm going through the comments but I need to lower my my shades So, yes, 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 okay, let me go quickly through the chat. So, hello everyone, blah, 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 hello, hello, hello. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Going a check, yes, I think that's the plan. Going a check of ten dollars will not be enough for for the big payment. For that, it really needs four digits, three very high digits, between seven hundred and a thousand, somewhere around there. No feedback on those numbers, people, guys. Give me feedback. Do you want? Do you need to see the figures again? Let me show them again tell me what I shall show and what we what we should talk about and where do you have questions I really want to get my my head around those figures how do you basically I think everything adds up the only thing I'm not so 100% sure is how this 500 million per week cost saving relates to 30% cost savings at 30% market share when there would be so many more markets, uh, customers. That's the, but maybe, I really don't know. Maybe there is more. I mean, another interesting thing, which would, do you remember that uh, the five trillion purportedly or reportedly being the Swift, the old, the pre-GPI Swift volume, and Swift GPI is very proud to report eight hundred billion at eighty percent. I don't know. Um, market share from their old system that would give us at 100% 1 trillion so my question is where is the other the other 4 trillions and these figures here basically could explain that Ripple might actually indeed already now cover the rest what do you think about that Do we have problems with uh, no data? Hold on. Excellent connect. Now you should be able to hear and see me again. Sorry. Checks what chat works. Excellent connection it says now. Let me move that to the side so I can keep an eye on that. <laughs> so
silver server i don't know could be that my family from brazil is streaming something on netflix or so i really don't know but now it seems to be fine give me feedback on those figures i really want you to think about those guys everything else we're we talk in other live streams like what's needed to go i really want you to think about those figures do you have any question do you have any proposals regarding those curves here if it's in, if it's totally important to make to make that slope for the for the daily transactions that are rather similar to that slope let me know what's the price are that's not what i'm talking about xrp run because we're t just talking fiat we're not talking xrp right now but obviously if and i'm pretty sure i am more or less correct with those figures if that's correct actually we could do another test let's do that amount of transactions the top 100 banks have in average 126,000 transactions a week. Ripple is getting close to a million. Actually, that's not a week, that's daily figures. At 30%. I'm so bad. 160,000. That would that would basically make total so also this figure roughly is correct that 30 percent would be like i don't know 40,000 and times 30 banks which is roughly 30 percent of 100 gives us the reported roughly 1 million even though here in the total it doesn't really match this is something i don't quite understand why do we have ah now i understand do i let me check so the average twenty six thousand transactions thirty percent of that hundred and twenty six thousand thirty percent of that and then times thirty banks that gives us roughly the the one million transactions so be, i think everything adds up please tell me where i'm making a mistake warning i will stop ok 
Can you hear me again? It says current speed stream bitrate is lower. It's just a warning. I hope you can still hear and see me. Excellent connection, it tells me now. Again, hold on a second. Um, alguma pessoa usando internet? So it really seems that today it's the internet connection which is bad I'm sorry about that can you still hear and see me guys if you hear me let me write if you hear me give me feedback on my numbers where if am I doing something wrong the numbers look accurate but what we need to see is how much in fees they are paying without using ripple well thank you Yambi well that figure is basically here those 500 million on in in seven days and that ripple net is actually cos model pdf and that ripple net does actually save 30% we can see here roughly that's not XRP that's just X current if they did use XRP at high volatility high volatility it'll be an additional 10% and if XRP had a, a low volatility it'll be an additional 30% almost so that's the figures Ripple themselves publish so I'm pretty sure that the figures here are more or less accurate does that satisfy your um, remark, Lambi or Yambi? Lambi, most most probably. Now I lost again my my. Aha, uh -huh, here. It's again warning. Sophie, what don't you understand? Tell me. Let me see. No, no, I think the issue is on my end. That, uh, where did you get these figures? Well, uh, basically explained. These ones I got from, from, from Wikipedia, the assets under management for the top 100 banks. 
for the amount of transaction I just did a rough um, I tried to to copy this yellow curve into a curve which roughly is similar it's not totally the same slope it's actually a little bit steeper than than the assets under management but I think the overall thing is well and then if we go down to the bottom amount of transactions the sum for the for the hundred top banks in the world is 12 million um, so we have some space to, to come to the 15 million uh, Swift is reporting having daily payment messages and here with the ra rather similar formula we get to a little bit less than or a little bit more than 4 trillion which is which still leaves us some room for the 11,000 other banks not in that table but because their volume their how do you say their they are so small it doesn't really like they're so small the curve is like going down almost to zero and and those the rest of those I think could be in in here so I think for the top hundred banks 4.3 trillion a day is is a good enough um, extrapolation what else don't you understand the rest I basically derived myself I will put let me make note of that I will put the link put link to swell videos those figures from the from that tweet from this tweet I have actually I can show that um, hold on I need to do that like this there is a, a link I can actually copy that link and then it's in the video of Kevin Kevin here Kevin Mo um, Hi good morning um, as was mentioned I'm Kevin Mole, VP can I marketing joined ah. here by Ross Edwards uh, Flying Solutions you know Brad started the conference Let yesterday me. and said ah, fixed subscription and payments we need to reset the piping and today what and the I hell a little bit of that piping getting under the hood um, you know, for our, our customers, our 300 plus customers across 70 countries, the payment experience for the end user is simple, frictionless, fast. To show you that demo would take 20 seconds. But when you look behind the scenes, that's where the magic happens. So that's uh, the video I'm talking about. Now, can I. In a couple different things. One, no, fuck, I, there is no. Counterparty, uh, by lab, How can I. Call it, which is not using digital assets. Uh, that's a pre funded relationship. I cannot scroll here. Um, I'm in full screen. Full screen is also not really. Hold on. Advantage in different parts of the globe. So basically, that's the part where they talk about where they talk about the uh, ripple net home in that video and the screenshot is from from those minutes basically but I won't play continue to play that I will put the link in the description of the of the video and then you can check that yourself where are my uh -huh, numbers here now let's go back to the Yes, it's from Ripple Home.
Scanning, those figures are live now. But it's just not X or P. That's something everyone has to understand. It's X current. If you, if you check that video from Kevin Mole, you will see he explains basically the difference between X current and ODL. And I really recommend everyone watching that that video vertical freedom because they're still not using x or p but what i'm trying to show with those figures is that the potential volume for high value transactions is definitely there and i just i don't know who reported that to me but i think someone reported even Excuse me, ODL transactions in uh, in uh, another currency, I think from United Arab Emirates. I don't see one here, but there purportedly there has been ODL transaction in in this uh, Arabic currency and also in ruble in in the in the russian currency so I, I see maybe you guys have to digest and that that basically means that we will stop the live stream here I want you guys to go through those figures again. I will put the PDF for those figures in the description Please go and check those who, who can do who, who can calculate and, and tell me where I'm wrong tell me where I'm right and and if all adds up to summarize, I think pretty well. I mean, my conservative estimate was that Ripple Net could cover 10% of the global volume. These figures here led me to assume that it most likely is more than 30%. That would also explain the kind of missing 4 trillion of volume between Swift and Swift GPI because Ripple has a large amount of those volumes already. It would also explain the getting close to the, to the, to the million weekly transact. It basically, in my perspective, it will basically explain everything but this only figure here, the 500 million per week cost saving that for a bank in the region of the 70s seems rather high but what could also be that it's actually I mean these figures here are 100% figures it could be that it's actually a, a top bank, I don't know, BBVA, like, or even higher, let's take HSBC, maybe it's HSBC figures we had seen in the, in the RippleNet home, but they're not using the all corridors, maybe they just use five corridors or so, which would cover, I don't know, 50% of their of their transaction volume that could also be the case and in that respect the if that will be the case then this 500 million cost saving would make sense again So Sophie, you're telling me they're upgrading to Ledger version XRP charts. 
1.5 is that correct validators I didn't I don't check those things usually um, validators Well, the current stable version is 1.4, it's not 1.5, Sophie. Yes. Well, Scanlink, that's basically what I tried to explain in the last live streams. When? I mean, I told it for about 15 months now. I don't believe that we are waiting for regulation that ODL or XRapid previously could be used. And I still stand for it. However, for the high value transactions, we need some market makers with, which can step in to, to, to this um, uh, and, and, and basically make, market, make, make the market for like um, hundreds of millions if you so want. And hold on, I, I have to show you another tweet and this is really um the guy Sidi Sharif can I show that he did a very interesting I will put the link to that tweet in into the description of the video read this what he basically explains in this thread it's a thread about, I think, I don't remember if it's the current thread or the thread in the link he referenced, in the tweet he references there. But basically what he's suggesting is that basically um, banks or no actually I have to explain it the other way around. He believes that maybe because Ripple has been talking so deeply and thoroughly to all central banks worldwide it was not just about regulations but also about connecting those domestic local rails and that would totally make sense and that basically not the CLS banks would play the market making role but actually the, the central banks themselves and that would be freaking amazing and I mean, with this new regulation coming in January for like the whole world being able, I mean, Europe, I don't know about the Arabic countries, but Europe, many countries in Southeast Asia, like Japan and others in that area, I think Australia as well, um, South America is anyway quite liberal, liberal with crypto regulations. Switzerland anyway and US of course and I think then those guys can start doing or acting in their market making role and that will then allow the high value transactions finally to go through the system because they're on the receiving side there will always need to be someone to buy XRP in the value of 50 million or 100 million and a normal market make like i could be one just doesn't have the 50 million at hand but central banks or those cls banks they would have that amount of fiat liquidity in order to be able to buy the xrp such that fiat can be paid out
Robert D. She's telling me I should. Are you talking about the tweet I have been showing before? My own tweet, basically. Um, hold on. This one, Robert Deesh. Uh, hold on. This one. There is no figures there. Anyway, um, so anyway, let's close here. That was cause just like because those figures uh, from that triple net home. I mean, I really don't want to. I'm totally excited, but I'm I don't want you to get over excited. Look at those figures. Check that video. Do a pause. Make full screen so that you can see the. The figures really well. I will put the link and the link to this uh, document I have created on uh, on the description of the video right after, like half an hour after the live stream. Check it. Give me feedback on Twitter. Give me feedback in the comments on the video. And with that i want to wish you a nice day we are going trying ice skating today with my family from brazil they have never do, been doing ice skating so let's we will see how it works my wife won't be doing ice skating because she tried it and she failed and she doesn't want to fail again take care um Maybe I'll come with an update on those figures before the end of the year as not a live stream, but actually as a video in itself. Take care. Don't lose hope. Say, stay strong. It'll come. The volume, the potential volume is really there. It's literally just the liquidity which is still missing and all those new regulations all around the world I think will help getting that part of the equation right as well. CSI, up to you. I'm not a financial advisor. I think XRP is really the only one which will make you freaking rich and which will give you financial freedom take care